music coming through. Why don't you go back there and see if you can hear it. Yeah, okay, this is on. Um, Good evening. It's good to have you all here tonight to share stories and memories of our beautiful Angela. I am Pastor Michelle. Angela was my cousin. I'm the oldest of the Eichmeyer girls. Um, I always tease the Eichmeyer girls. I'm the wisest because <laughs> I'm first. But um, we're going to start this evening with a prayer and some special music and then sharing stories of my amazing cousin. So let us pray. O oh Lord God, 
we come to you at this time of great shock and grief and ask that in your grace you would shed your peace and comfort to all who are mourning the death of Angela that was so very sudden and unexpected. Thank you for being our rock and our fortress where we can always find refuge. You have said that whoever follows you will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. As we feel the darkness of grief and sorrow, shine your light on our lives. Comfort our sorrowing hearts. Pour your peace that surpasses all understanding in the hearts of all who are grieving and shower the assurance of your love on us at this time of sadness. Lord, we do not grieve as those who have no hope, those that have not trusted in Christ our Savior, for our hope and our trust is in you, and our eyes are looking to you for strength, encouragement, and comfort. You are the one who was sent to heal the brokenhearted and comfort those that mourn and are heavy laden. You are the one who promised that your grace is sufficient. Draw near to us and lift us into your arms of love. Carry us during this time of suffering and grief. Lord, we pray that your love surround us, your spirit guide us, your voice cheer us, your peace calm us, your shield protect us, your wisdom arm us, wherever you may lead us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will now hear special music. I get into picture yet? I'm just looking online. Uh, the speakers are. Uh, my name is Kim. I'm a teacher at the school, and that's how I know Don and Marlis. Um, in December, Don asked me to sing the song with him or another uh, colleague and friend, and uh, this time he thought it may be best that he sit this one out. You lived your life, you lived it well, you changed our lives, oh can't you tell how much our lives have changed? We knew you. I'll kiss you on the other side, but as long as I am still alive, I'll hold on to our love until I see you. Hallelujah. 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 the fight, but I knew you gave it all your might, with every breath to keep right by our side. It's clear our love can't keep you here, but we'll walk on without a fear, holding on to memories, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 
Thank you, Kim and Uncle Chuck. That was beautiful and spoke so much about Angie. So I'm going to start, um, my hand up, but I'm going to start the story since I have the mic. <laughs> um, my precious Angie, ugh. I waited so long for a little girl cousin. <laughs> There's, I mean, I love you boys, but there was something pretty special when she came into our lives, into my life, I finally had a girl, even though, um, you know, I'm a little older than her. <laughs> it was pretty amazing to have a precious cousin to share our lives with. Of course, when she was little, I would just hold her and cuddle her and couldn't wait till we were all together as a family. Um, but the cool part is that as we grew up, and uh, we were best friends, too. Cousins, friends, family. We could relate to all the things. She would talk to me about parenting her beautiful kids. We would talk together just about all the things of life. And the best parts and the hardest parts. And I was grateful to walk through all of that with her. She taught me so much about grace and forgiveness and kindness. And I only hope that I could have shown and taught her as much. So she and I had this thing about Eichmeyer women, because <laughs> I don't know, we're stubborn and we're strong and, um, and we're soft and fragile, too. And when I, um, I came across this book, which says Girl Boss, for those of you who can't see it, it's my favorite journal, because um, I'm a pastor, too, in my other life. <laughs> and so this gives me um, just a little piece of Angie's strength and wisdom when I'm not feeling it. So I keep all my important notes in here. Um, and I think of her every time I look at it. All right, enough of me. Who would like to come forward and share some stories? <laughs> I know it's not easy, but if I can, like, almost cry. You come up here. It doesn't matter if you cry or if you can't say words. Um, we'd love to hear how Angie has been a part of your life. Hey, um, I'm Aunt Tammy. Um, I have all kinds of stories. Um, lots of things we laughed at. Um, I was blessed with two sons, but I stole my daughters from my brothers and my sister. Um, Angie was one of my stolen daughters, and we spent a lot of time together. Um, she made me laugh. Uh, she traveled with my family to Florida. We spent a couple weeks in Florida every June. 
And when, um, uh, when Ike was born, Ike was my youngest, and she was our first babysitter to travel with us, uh, when we had a blast, she kind of became the big sister to my kids, to my sons. I think they'd agree with me that she was kind of their big sister. When I brought Angie back home to her mom and dad, I told her, I said, I don't want to give her back. Can I keep her? Marley said, no. <laughs> but I will share her. And she did. And she has for all these years. And I will, I will always remember them. Um, a fun story uh, that Angie and I and Aunt Patty and Grandma traveled to Virginia for a wedding, um, Jenny and Kyle's wedding. And um, we had a blast getting there. We got lost. Um, we didn't worry about it, but people who were waiting for us apparently were worried about us. We were in Virginia driving down roads that had grass between them. <laughs> um, it was quite strange. But we got there and hadn't worried about that. Um, I think there was a couple of my brothers who were sitting in the lobby having beer waiting for us, um, which isn't unusual. Um, Angie and I got to our room, and um, Angie started looking around and noticed some bugs. And well, that wasn't going to work for both of us. Angie and I were both high rise campers. It <laughs> truly, truly, this is not a good plan for us. So we went down to the desk, and they found us another room at another hotel. Um, and when we got there, they asked if we wanted the ground floor or the second floor. And we both looked at each other, second floor, the bugs can't crawl that far. So um, yeah, um, it's just some of the fun stories. Um, Angie was with us a couple years ago in Florida when we sprinkled my husband's ashes at Redfish Pass. Um, I was glad she was there. I had all my kids there. I have a kind of a, my soul and daughters were all there with me. And it made things easier, but we all cried. Um, I'm getting through this because I'm looking up at both of them, looking down at us. And um, they're, they're smiling. I know Ken was there to greet her when she came up. And I know she's safe, and she's taken care of. And she took care of my little ones, and I'm sure going to help take care of her little ones. I love you both. All right, would someone else like to share? I feel like I owe it to Angie to stand up because this is not something I would ever do. <laughs> I am, this is something Angie would do. And so that's why I wanted to do this for her. Um, I've known Angie ever since I was very, very small. And even though I haven't seen her in 20 years, sorry, I'm not even going to pretend I'm not going to cry. <laughs> even though I haven't seen her in 20 years, when I got the news, my heart broke. Like, she was my best friend. That she was in elementary school. Because as we said, we were family. We were with each other all the time. During school, every class, after school, in Girl Scouts, on the weekends, at sleepovers at each other's houses, at every birthday party. And um, I don't have a specific story, I just remember. I remember her house fondly. I loved going there. It was always a wonderful place to be, full of love. And Angie was just a fun person to be with, always. And so much life, so much spunk, so much attitude. And that everybody needs a little a friend like that. It makes them feel like they can do anything, even if they're a bit afraid. We miss you, Angie. I miss you.
agree with Adrian here. I'm really bad at these things. Um, I, um, Angie taught me what cottage cheese was because I'd never seen it. <laughs> we were like in second grade and I was over at the farm and we were making lunch and she pulls out this container and she's like, do you want some cottage cheese? And I was like, whoa, <laughs> what's, what's that? It's one of my memories. <laughs> uh, she also... Uh, Loved lambs. Board kind of validates that. Um, so I got her a baby lamb chop when she was little. She was pretty happy with that. Um, I just I knew her well. Um, we we were we met when we were three. Um, we were I don't know. We were really good friends. Um, she was there for me for a lot. Um, she was my rock. She was my level head. Um, she, she always gave me her opinion. It didn't come with judgment, but she gave me her opinion. Um, and she was right a lot of the times. And we survived, um, you know, a 30, 36 year friendship. Um, it's, it was a great friendship. And I'm going to miss the snot out of her, um, but sorry, this is as good as it's going to get. <laughs> if my girl can do it, I guess I can too. I don't know how many people here have gotten when your cows came out, but I think I've talked to about five, six people who have been there at the same time or, or at a certain time when the cows got out <laughs> or the cows were looking through the windows in the, in the house or, or this or that, but it was uh, one of those things where that happened every once in a while at your place, Don. My wife tells me that I don't know what I said five minutes ago, so I wrote some things down just to make sure I stayed on task. Okay. Relationships with the Eichmeyers. Dang it, we did a lot together. Raising those kids together and going through a lot of different things. Don and Marlis were involved with scouts. They were involved with Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. I ran Little League here and there. My wife, Diane, ran the, the, the girls' softball. And uh, we, always, we always had Eichmeyers around us all the time, helping us or doing things with us. And uh, I remember when we started the Little League program in Rockville, there was a, a one-team it was called the Blues, and we had so many kids that we had to start a team called the Reds. And uh, we didn't have enough people. Well, Angie showed up. Mary showed up. And Debbie Pelzer showed up. So now I got three girls on the boys' team. And uh, I, I didn't know what to think of that. because, But if the boys could do it, the girls could do it, right? That's how they felt. Uh, camping. I was a Cub Scout leader. I was uh, involved in camping. We used to take the scouts out to Parker's Scout Reservation. Remember that? And we used to go to Warner Lake in St. Augusta and camp. You've never camped until you go out with Angie and Don Eichmeyer. Never. We, the girls talked us into, I think the girls talked us into it, I'm not quite sure, but we went to Boundary Waters. So Mary, me, Don, and Angie. And man, a glory, I didn't know what camping was till I went with those two. Here we are, up in the Boundary Waters, we're canoeing. And uh, we're going on and on and on, and we set up camp. And we're out there, and Don goes, 
gather some leaves up. We need to get leaves up. We need a nice bedding for the tent, you know, because it's going to be softer when you're in the tent. So we did that. And then uh, he started telling us about the things we had to do during camping, like uh, put up a rope, and when we're all done eating, we're going to put the food in a container, and we're going to hoist it up in the air because then the bears can't get at it. And the bears can't be coming around and looking through the tent for food because the food's going to be up in the air. And I thought, oh my God, this is camping. And then he goes, oh, and by the way, we've got to bury our doo-doo. I go, okay. He says, yeah, we've got to bury it. So that's part of camping. I didn't know anything about. And it's like, okay. And so anyway, we did the camping thing, and we're going after our first setup. We're in the canoe and we're going, and the boulders or the, the, the hills or the rock formations are so tall that when you get around the corner with your canoe, all of a sudden you see a storm coming. I mean a monster storm coming. That here it's sunlight, then it's a storm. Donnie, first thing you said is we need to find a spot to set up and fast. So we found a spot. We set up the tent as fast as we could. And we're in the tent, and just when we get in the tent, the storm hits. And so Angie and Mary and me and Don are in this tent, and you pull out a deck of cards. <laughs> he brought a deck of cards. And so we're playing cards with Mary and Angie, and I think it was girls against boys, you know? And it was, the girls are competitive. They always have been. But uh, we did that camping trip. And then we, uh, we made it home. <laughs> uh, laundry waters, bear shit, <laughs> food provisions, where to locate the tent, uh, stuff like that. So anyhow, Mary, I'm so proud of you. And you had one of the bestest friends in the world. And uh, so many things are a lot like you know, Wes and Tony being this close, you and Angie that close. You had, a, you had a great girl there. And we had great friends in you guys. And we still do. Thank you for giving us Angie. Does anyone else like to share? I met Angie in middle school when we started summer marching band. Um, we were 13. And our first summer, we went out for senior. We were 14 years old. I was on third base, and Angie was on fourth base. Those drums were bigger than we were. And that meant that in every formation, Angie was behind me. So for those of you that know Angie well, she's very accident prone. So it's very scary to have her behind you with a bass drum. <laughs> um, in the time I knew Angie, she fell down a hill and skinned up her chin, actually right behind this church. Um, she stabbed herself in the foot with a pitchfork. She, at one time I believe she thought, or maybe her brother ran over her foot. Sorry, Dan. Um, when... Angie found out I was pregnant when we had just turned 18. Her first words were, I'm so glad you're going to finally get fat. <laughs> <laughs> um, Angie and I went from talking about how terrible our parents were for never letting us do anything to talking about raising babies and marriages and divorces. Um, Angie always had a good way of making up a nickname for absolutely anybody. Um, we were in a gas station once, and there was a man in there, probably about 65, and he smiled big at Angie. So Angie looked at him and said, I'm going to call you Hank. He looked at her and he's like, well, that's not my name, but she was okay with just calling him Hank. She then invited him to her birthday party. He 
never did show up, Marlis. <laughs> Um, when I first met Angie, I was a total city kid. I had never really been on a farm. And Don and Marlis had a program of inner city children that would come and tour their farm. And part of that was the Don would show them how to weigh a sheep. So you had to pull the end of this bar to weigh a sheep. And Don and Marlis always laughed at me because I could never weigh the sheep. But Marlis would call me sometimes and say, we have a cow that needs to calf. Why don't you come on over? Because every time I came over, there was a new calf. <laughs> um, Don and Marlis's house was always the place, I think, that we all gathered. Um, sorry, Marlis, we did sneak out. <laughs> <laughs> but Angie always had a way of making everybody feel welcome and loved. And she was always there with a kind word or a sarcastic remark, whatever it was that you needed at the time. Um, Angie was always fun to have class with because she just made everything <laughs> fun. Maybe we got into a little bit of trouble, but it was all good trouble. Um, Angie, the last time I saw Angie, we had met at the Mall of America, and we were talking about how different our lives were after so many years of being friends. Um, my daughter was five at the time, and if I would have known that that was the last time that I would be face to face with Angie, I think things would have been different. But I've never met anybody that was as kind and generous and considerate as Angie. bringing my sidekick because if you know Angie she loves babies <laughs> um, as I walked in that was one of the first things I was like she got to hold him she got to hold um, my last little one as well um, I feel super privileged to just stand here and listen to all the stories of friends and family um, I've only gotten to know Angie for the past couple of years um, so I know her um, from her time in Waukesha um, through Fox River and special needs and all of that stuff. Um, and one of Angie's big things is um, her hashtag, Grace Attitude Purpose. Um, and a couple of us were talking, and it was, she's the kind of friend you want in your life, and I think that's the biggest legacy that um, she's going to leave behind. Um, I know for me especially, um, she's the person you want in your corner, rooting for you um, no matter what. She could be in the thick of it, and um, she would show up at my, I have four tiny kids, four under four, um, and she would show up with dinner. Um, she knew her fajitas were my favorite, <laughs> um, and so I'd get fajitas a lot, but that's, I can only hope to be that kind of friend to those around. Um, and so um, while I only got a couple of years, um, that's truly going to be what um, sticks with me the most. Um, I think we all need a little bit of Angie in our life. Um, and that just grace, attitude, purpose, she lived that well. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I've got. Very similar. I've, I was blessed to meet Angie through church, um, special needs, her children. Uh, got to know her over the last couple of years pretty well because she would talk about her campfires in her backyard. 
And she would always try to go buy wood from gas stations or the store. And so we'd yell at her. And so she'd come to our house, and we, we got the nickname. We were her wood dealer. <laughs> she'd try to pay us for the wood, and we'd be like, nope, just make us more of that salsa that you make. Um, so between the salsa or the pies or lasagnas, fajitas, um, we were fed. <laughs> um, and so she has just, just, the last couple of years have just been a blessing. Um, and yeah, I, and I, I think it was one of your friends over here that said that if the last time I saw her was, I knew it was going to be the last time. And uh, fortunately, it wasn't that long ago, but it was still, shouldn't have been. She's going to be missed. Hi, I am uh, uh, Don's uh, much younger brother, Chuck, <laughs> and Angela's favorite uncle. Uh, just don't tell my brothers. Okay. Uh, my story about Angie. Let's see, my, my daughters, Alyssa and Shauna, were in marching band, and uh, they would do these fundraisers. Don is well familiar with going down to the old Metrodome and doing concessions there. And so I would join them, my daughter would go down as well and help out. Well, one time they didn't want me in a concession stand. They handed me a stack of these game day books. I said, go down the street and sell them. Okay, I'll go down the street and sell them. You know, so about four blocks down, there's the local businessmen there. You know, some people call them scalpers. I think that's kind of a mean name for them. But, uh, you know, I got to talking to them, got to know them, and, you know, got to understand their business a little bit. And they told me to stick, you know, game day books, get them here. You know, save your time at the gate. And I was selling them, I was shucking, I was, going, I was doing pretty good. And uh, this story is about Angie, right? Oh, okay. Got you. Got you. Oh, yeah. I look up, and who should be walking down the sidewalk towards me but Angela and her brother Michael. They were going to the Twins game. So they didn't see me. So I said, this is going to be good. <laughs> Official game day books, get them right here. Well, Angela, I could tell the mood she was in. Do not make eye contact. Do not talk to these people. They will, they will cheat you. So she, no, no, thank you. She rushes right by me. And, really? I can't even sell these damn things to my niece and nephew? <laughs> <laughs> she stops cold, spins around. Uncle Chuck! <laughs> <laughs> I got one of the classic uh, uh, Angie hugs. It was just precious. And we got to talking, you know. And going to the Twins game, yeah. You know, do you have tickets? No, we're going to get them at the ticket booth up there. Hey, I got some friends here. <laughs> Her eyes got about as big as the moon, you know. Just, Uncle Chuck, don't do this. <laughs> no, no, he comes over. What can I do for you, little lady? What kind of seats are you looking for? Uncle Chuck, make him go away. <laughs> so, fine, honey, go ahead, have fun. And, and, then, and they took off. They pointed. I tried, I tried to help you, you know, yeah, I appreciate that. Well, he was sending his clientele over to me the rest of the night, so I was selling all kinds of books for this place. <laughs> but uh, that's my story. <laughs> Any others? Well then, um, I think I just want to thank you all again for being here and for being a part of Angela's life. 
She was one special woman and will be greatly missed, but her legacy will live on in her beautiful kids and in all of us that were fortunate enough to know her and love her. Before we leave tonight, let us close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.